Hey there, my name's Kevin and welcome to episode five of our new baritone strumming series. Today we're gonna to take a look at a pattern that I like to use for folk Americana, kind of the singer songwriter style of music. So we're gonna break that strumming pattern down, apply it to a couple of simple chord progressions and spend a little time playing along together. So get your baritone tuned up and let's get started. Hey, if you wouldn't mind doing me a little favor before we get started, Click that alert bell so you know when the next video is coming your way. And if you love this channel, click that subscribe button. Share it with your friends. Let them know that you're learning all of your baritone stuff from All For Uke. All right, so let's break down this pattern. So the pattern is going to be down, down, up, down, up. So that might sound familiar to you because we just used it. But the difference is this pattern is gonna be in the 4-4 time signature. So when we use the other pattern, it was in a waltz, which was 3-4. So that's where you have to determine now what time signature you're in when you're deciding which strumming pattern to use. So we're in the 4-4 time signature, so this will break down over one and two and three and four and rather than three. So let's take a look here. I'm just gonna demonstrate just holding down a G chord here just to show you guys how to use the strumming pattern and how to count it. So our first move is down and that's one. We do a ghost strum up and we're gonna do another down strum which is two. And then we have up, down, up which will be and, four, and. Let's just watch this again really slow. So we have one, two, now we go and, four, and. So let's try that together, just nice and slow. Hold a G chord here, ring finger, third fret on the E string. It should sound like this. And just count with me at home as you're doing this. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, and four, and one, two, and four, and one, two, and four, and one, two, and four, and. So a term here that I want to mention is called subdividing, and that means that you always want to keep your hand going down and up the entire time, subdividing the rhythm going one and two and three and four and. So when you notice here after the second down strum, two, there's a hesitation. So what you can actually do is keep your hand going the entire time. So I go one, two, and four and. If that helps you with the timing of it, that's fine. Otherwise, you're gonna kinda have to stay with a metronome to make sure that you're staying on the beat for that and four and. That's the only little quirk about this strumming pattern is kinda getting that up, down, up to kinda sync up. So I'm gonna talk a little bit more about how we're going to count this. So I'm gonna use a metronome so I can really kind of show how this works. And we're gonna use the first chord of the progression that we'll be talking about. So we're gonna start off with an E minor chord, which is just gonna be middle finger holding down the D string on the second fret, like this. So I'm gonna start the metronome up, and I'm just gonna show you the difference here, whether I kind of let my hand hang down here below before the up, down, up strum, or if I kind of move that with the beat so it stays in time. So check this out here. I'm just gonna go nice and slow. It's about 74 beats per minute here. And I'm just gonna hold down the one chord and count as I do this. So I'll count one, two, three, four. One, two, and four, and one, two, and four, and one. So you'll notice there, there's a little bit of a ghost strum that happens. So I go down, down, I go up and down without hitting the strings. Now that's what I was talking about with subdivision as my hand continues to go up and down. That's a key component to strumming and keeping in time. If you ever feel like your strumming is varying in speed, tempo, that's a normal thing to happen, and that's why I think it's so important to use the metronome because that keeps everything really solid in your foundation as you're learning how to do these rhythms. So you're more than welcome to do them even slower than that. And I'd also suggest, especially with a little bit more of an intricate pattern like this, that you even watch your hand while you're doing this. You know, So I try to choose 
simplistic chords, maybe one or two finger chord that I don't really have to think about much of my fretting hand and I can really solely focus on what's happening here with my strumming hand. So now we're gonna put together a little chord progression starting with that E minor chord. We're gonna move to an A chord. So you're just gonna add your ring finger and your pinky finger here to the G string and the B string and that will sound like this. And then I've got a cool chord for you here. This is an A suspended four. I'm gonna take this A chord and I'm gonna shift my pinky out on the B string to the third fret and that sounds like this. So it's kinda of got this nice dreamy kinda of sound to it. So we have E minor, A, and A sus four. So we'll play the E minor two times through the strumming pattern. One time on the A chord. And one time on the A sus four. So the middle finger can just stay right here on the top string the entire time. Everything that you're gonna be moving is happening here. Try to keep your fingers nice and close to the fretboard as you're doing this. Now maybe you start bringing your attention more to your fretting hand as you strum. You kinda of have a little bit more precision as you do this. So we're gonna do this with the metronome at 74. I'll count for a few repetitions and I want you just to really listen to the metronome, listen to the strum and try to sync yourself up with me and you'll be playing in time. So here we go. I'll count us in with a four count. One, two, three, four. One, two, and four, and 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 one, two, and four. So now we're gonna bump up the tempo to 90 beats per minute. So it's gonna be moving a little bit faster, but I encourage you to spend a lot of time doing these slow repetitions, really focusing on the strumming pattern. So if the speed gets to you here, don't be afraid just to slow it down, go back to that slower tempo and work your way up to 90, increasing the metronome by two beats per minute every couple days as you get more comfortable with it. So here we go, same chord progression, 90 beats per minute, and I'll give us a four count in. One, two, three, four, one, two, and four, and 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 one, two. One more time. So now we're gonna check out a second chord progression here. So the chords for this sequence are going to be A major, which is played just like we did it in the last progression. And then we're gonna to move to a D chord here. So for the D chord, I play my index finger here on the second fret of the G string, ring on the B string third fret, and middle on the E string on the second fret. That sounds like this. Nice tilt to your hand here. Make sure you're on your fingertips. All those strings and notes are ringing pretty. And then we move back to an A chord. And then the fourth chord of the sequence here is going to be an E major chord. Kind of looks similar to that E minor chord we just did. Middle finger on the D string second fret. Index finger on the G string on the first fret. That looks like this. So we'll do two times through the strumming pattern on each one of those chords. We're gonna do this at 90 beats per minute. So we're just gonna kind of go straight to the faster tempo again. Work on this again. Kind of 
think about your chord progression before you jump in. If you need to spend a little time here, what I like to do with a new chord sequence is just kind of walk through it doing single strums, kind of map it out before I incorporate the strumming pattern, making sure my fretting hand can keep up with what I'm doing. So if you need to pause, spend a little time with that, feel free to do so. If you're ready to rock, let's do it. One, two, three, four. So you're probably asking yourself now, I learned this new strumming pattern, but where do I apply it? Well, there's all sorts of songs in the 4-4 time signature where you could apply this, but a couple of them of note would be Vance Joy's Riptide, maybe the Lumineers, Ho Hey uses this, and a lot of stuff in the folk Americana genre you can apply this strumming pattern to. And hopefully, now that you've kind of got it in your ear, you'll be able to pick it up as you're listening to different songs, and you might be able to apply it in a different situation. You could also probably search Google and say, which songs use this strumming pattern. I've never tried it, but you might want to try it. And if you really want to elevate your playing, I've put together some practice resources at allforyuke.com, including practice tracks that you can jam along with, work on these strumming patterns, and some PDFs that have different chord progressions, different metronome markings, so you can actually work on these through a lot of different progressions and really hone in on these strumming patterns. So if you want to check those out, allforyuke.com is where you need to be. If you guys like this video, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, leave your comments below, and I will plan on seeing you next time back here. My name's Kevin. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.